Alongside Bobby Bell, Jared Sandler with you. Coming up uh, here in a few minutes, we are going to shoot the breeze with the beeve. And uh, we have a special guest in studio. It's always great to have people not over the phone, but in studio. I know, uh, right? Yeah, well, there you go. That is. I'm not the, a cat yeah, You haven't been introduced yeah, yet. Yeah, you have to oh, sorry. Yeah. You don't yes. exist until we've introduced correct, you. Correct, correct. Okay, okay. Please introduce me. We'll re- 10 second rewind. <laughs> yes. uh, we have the, the wonderful Kelsey Charles. She of... Uh, DallasCowboys.com and the Girls Talking Boys podcast, a part of the SB Nation podcast network. Uh, and I don't do this very often. I, I probably can only count on one hand, unfortunately. Oh. I, I'm I can't fun. wait to hear what you're about to say. No, she either. is a bunch of fun to hang out with and watch college oh, football. Oh, okay. good, good, good. Uh, <laughs> back when I was still fun and would, would join up with Kavanaugh and, and company, that's where I first met Kelsey. And yeah. I think uh, your co host, Megan. Yes. I think I'm. Who, who does she. She has a. A love for which school? There's like, oh yeah. So um, she loves LSU. 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 That is, that yeah, is not that. a school, you guys. No, no, it's not. LSU is one of her favorite schools. She also likes Nebraska. Her Nebraska. Whole that's is the from one Nebraska. that. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Big Randy Gregory people. Uh, Runza is. is really bad. I'm going to go ahead and say this on record for the millionth time. It's a very trash food organization. And anyone what in is? Omaha or Nebraska, Runza. Oh, I've never heard of that. It's Well, don't, because it's awful. What is it? It's literally like a cabbage hot pocket. And I'm telling you, the people in Nebraska treat it like In-N-Out or like Texans treat Whataburger. Like, it's a religion there, and they are visceral in their reactions. Should you ever speak ill of this piece of, I don't even, I can't even call it food. It's very I mean, in uh, It's not even... It just, it's not edible. Honestly, if like all you had around you was like corn, like I guess maybe cabbage would like get me excited too, but. <laughs> Jared's face right now. Well, I'm just I, it, like, like, I love that she just comes she's just firing. Yeah. Like, she's like, hey, look, yeah. look, I've, I've really been meaning to get this off my chest. <laughs> yeah. let, 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 let me talk about cabbage in Nebraska. <laughs> You know, I know we got a big reach there in Nebraska. So, I know so we're doing all here you, on the show. Yeah, like, yeah, you no, might, no. It, this is the target audience. No, I feel no, like no, it's yeah. appropriate. We, we had you here to, to talk about the Dallas Cowboys. But. <laughs> I'm very unmedicated today, so this could go anywhere. Prepare oh, yourself. Oh, Buckle no, up, see, everyone. See, see, uh, well, see, it's good because I am I'm uh, very much medicated, and so I'll <laughs> zero us in here. Uh, you know, they were talking earlier today. We were listening to Chris and uh, Chris Arnold and Kevin Gray talking earlier today, and they had brought up this topic of – you look at Green Bay is doing everything they can, even though they're having salary cap trouble, to bring back Aaron Rodgers right. and then to bring back Devontae Adams. And Kansas City, you know, has done everything they can do to preserve things. The Rams are out there trading guys and trying to make things work with contracts and everything else so that they can run it back. And, and you know, they're, they're doing everything they can. And then here are the Cowboys talking about, you know, well, we live in a salary cap era. There's a lot of things to consider about budget and things like that. And, and that's really got some people irritated. And I know that. Chris and KG specifically were like, this is this is ridiculous that everybody else is out there trying to, to make things happen. And you're telling us why you got to blow it up. So I have an unpopular opinion. OK. And I want to get your thoughts on it. Let's hear it. And I, I, I love Amari Cooper. I love DeMarcus Lawrence. I want to bring them back. But I don't necessarily think this is a team worth like you got to save it. Like, I mean, if you can make it work and then you can make it work for your books, do it. But if it's going to cause you problems into the future, like I'm not in the business of like, let's make things really difficult financially in 2023 so that we can make it to the divisional round in 2022. I don't have any interest in that. If if, if you need to move on and make some decisions now, go ahead and make them and, and start playing for the long term. Go ahead and start figuring out how you're going to get out from Zeke and how you're going to do some other things. But I'm not in favor of just running this back just because we like the talent when in reality right now, I don't think anybody thinks this is a Super Bowl team. Do you think the talent, let me take that a step further then. I'd, I'd love to hear if this is an assumption that I, you think is fair. Do you think the talent that you can retain in lieu of keeping Amari Cooper is going to make this team better? That's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. And, and I, then, I, let me ask a side question. Do you have the confidence that this front office will take advantage of whatever flexibility they're going to gain to acquire the town and make the necessary moves to make it better. No. Look, if I'm being if I'm being honest with you guys and I don't like that I'm saying that, but it feels like a dollar store strategy with hopes of a Neiman Marcus return. And I don't think that's ultimately super realistic. It, I don't think that the bargain play is always going to be ultimately what ends up working out. Like you can bank on Will McClay and he's incredible. He is so good at what he does, yeah. right? And his team is too. But I just I I feel like it feels a little wheelie and dealy for me when ultimately I really don't see how you are 
imminently making your team like that much better with this transaction. I'm not going to go as far as to say like go full LA Rams and just, you know, whether, whether or not you want to say they're mortgaging their future, I don't care, but they did go out and get guys that could make an impact immediately. And I don't know. I just, I have some concerns about the strategy behind that decision. See, here's the thing. You got to free up just to retain everybody, just to get you back to zero. You got to free up $21 million. Then in order to get your draft class in here, you probably need another 10, 15, somewhere around there. And then you're going to need to free up even more money to retain Randy and J Ron and all this stuff. So in order to, you would have to flip basically every restructure switch that you can right. to keep all of them right, and, and max them out. So we're talking about next year, you would not be able to release Ezekiel Elliott. You, you wouldn't be able to move on from that deal. You are putting yourself in a worse position with Demarcus Lawrence into the future. And, and he's going to have a massive cap number if you do that. I'm all in favor of, of if you can figure out a way to do it, do it. Save Amari Cooper, save Demarcus Lawrence. But to me, it's just like, I, I don't know that if you have to flip all these switches and make yourself in a worse financial position next year than you are even this year, that it's worth it to do it for this particular team, which I still don't think is a Super Bowl contender as it stands today. And so instead, it's like, you know what, Let, let's preserve certain parts of it. But if you guys need to get out from under some stuff now so that you can have the flexibility to actually like take care of things next offseason, fine, do it. Take a year to just say, let's figure it out and and we'll call this one a wash. Like like I there's I'm playing devil's advocate a little bit here. Sure. But but I think that it's it's not a ridiculous strategy, I think, as everybody has portrayed it to be. I guess in my opinion, I look at this team and I do feel like it really does depend on where you stand on that side of the line of whether you agree that the talent is not worthy of, you know, getting to the big game and they really can't make it happen. Or if you think, hey, no, actually genuinely Let's ride this narrative. And I do subscribe to the theory that we are in the salary cap era. And because of that, we we are doing pretty well at X, Y, Z position. Sure, you can always find ways to improve, but like we don't have a blank check because that's not the rules of the game anymore. So I I guess it would depend on where you land in that regard, because I personally and maybe I'm just silly and, and, you know, buy into the Cowboys offseason hype that seems to happen every single year where we're like, Hey, they can make it to the game. It's the year for the Cowboys, right? Like, are sure. they, are, is it, the, is this the year they finally make it happen again? I mean, it felt like they had the capability of making it happen at times, for sure. I mean, I really do believe that if you can do it once, you can recreate it and do it again. I just think it was a lack of consistency and it kind of started to compound. And I really do feel like there were some mental aspects to the game that, quite frankly, I do think got to this team. And ultimately didn't allow them to per- perform to the levels that I think they're capable of performing consistently. Yeah. So I do feel like they have a good thing going right now. And I am concerned about if they do indeed cut Amari Cooper, what you're going to bring in the building to improve the team as it stands today and make it that much better in how many seasons are we going to give for them to bounce back from this? It's, it's a good thing, but is it a great thing is one of the questions, right? Okay. I wanna, well, I want to ask this, and, and I know that the money that you save on Amari, and full disclosure, I am pro-cutting Amari. Right. But it's that's because you cheer for the Packers, and you want to make it easier for them. Sure. Yes. <laughs> uh, is this, are, are we going Amari to the, the Packers? No, 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 no. They, they, got no, their they, they don't have any money. Yeah. Where are they going to find that? I, I'm going to let Jared, Jared go ahead and set up what you're going to set up, but I do have a follow-up for you after that. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so... The money that they save on Amari can be distributed anywhere. It doesn't have to go towards uh, receivers. I'm just curious, Mm -hmm. what is, for each of you, what is the likely receiving trio, or if you want to throw in a fourth, that they're going to roll out there? Because I will say, I think to Kelsey's point to some degree, and and, maybe this was indirectly what you were saying I think we went into this year thinking, well, the Cowboys do have a positional advantage, a receiver. Right. And you get rid of Amari. That's not to say you can't create advantages elsewhere, but I don't think, you know, unless they go and surprise us and bring in some and bring in Devontae Adams, which I know that's not going to happen. Sure. They're not, that's not going to be a positional advantage. It, it, it might be neutral. It might be a disadvantage, but who are the three receivers? Is it, is it CD off of an ACL tear, Michael Gallup and Cedric Wilson? What what are you doing there? And I know the draft obviously could change that. 
Sure. It, it's, I would guess at that point, I think they believe with the $16 million they saved by releasing Amari, and I've said this, I think that they think they can extend Gallup, they can extend Cedric Wilson, they can extend Malik Turner, and get all of their first-year cap numbers, not their average annual value, but they can get all of their first-year cap numbers to fit inside of that $16 million and still pocket some extra cash. And so I think what they look at it as is, given what we're paying Amari, and right now, there are a lot of teams that even though they like Amari Cooper, they're not finding anybody to buy it on a trade right now because right. of the cap. People don't feel like that cap number is worth it. So the Dallas isn't alone in that. Right. And so I think they view it as keep three guys we like versus one guy we like, but three guys, some extra cash, and then get somebody in this deep receiver draft. You drafted Michael Gallup in the third. You drafted Cedric Wilson in the sixth. Find one of these second or third round receivers to compete with Wilson and, and Turner in that group. I think that they feel like we can find a, a formidable like trio of receivers by going with Gallup, Wilson, you know, Turner, Lamb, and draft pick to all compete with each other and just find the three best. I it's a little bit of an exaggeration, I think, for people to say this is twenty eighteen again where they just reset and said, Alan Hearns and Deontay Thompson, there you go. That's going to replace Dez and Cole Beasley. Like, that was ridiculous. Right. But it's not quite to that extent. But I think they are going to look at it similar to just like, we weren't getting that level of production. Anyway, Dalton Schultz and Amari Cooper basically put up the same numbers this year. And so that, that's a lot to pay for. And I know there are people there in that building who feel like Amari's losing a step and we're trying to get ahead of this a little bit. Yeah. Which, that's what a lot of great teams do, right? New they, England's they, done it for years. They, they get rid of guys before it becomes a problem and but what they do is also then make the right corresponding moves to take advantage of whatever flexibility they have let me ask you guys this because i think this this i really do i'm not saying i'm against 100 percent the whole you know cutting amari cooper and, and saving that cap space but i guess again like my response is always going to be contingent on the moves you're going to make with that and i look at a guy like a michael gallup how certain are you that he's going to be able to make an immediate impact come the beginning of the season? And also, I will give them this, too, with the Cedric Wilson. I mean, it is incredible the depth this team has at the receiver position because I would never in a million years have been like, yeah, Cedric Wilson is a guy that I'm having a serious conversation about in terms of being a major component of my offense. Like Cause, that, that's because you don't believe in Boise State. I mean, listen. You're just a Boise big. This team sure as hell does, though, because Gosh, we love wow, drafting goodness, guys she, from she, that place. She is, she is just going after middle America today with Nebraska <laughs> <I> and their <laughs> Hot Pockets. I'm and from just Kansas. Like, I'm from Kansas, I hate too. Potato. Yeah, so that, oh, that's it. You I'm just, a little biased. Yeah, you just, you, you hate, like, middle America. Yeah. That, that's your problem. Yeah. Kelsey Charles, middle America hater. That's why she runs with her, like <laughs> her big security team that, yeah. up in the building and right. she takes the helicopter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I wish you guys wouldn't talk about that. Yeah, the helicopter ride in though? It was good. It was they, good. A meal or no? Do um, they provide a meal? Yeah, they do, but it was a short service because, you know, it's like a pretty up and down flight because they're yeah. just across the street here. But, yeah. you know, a light beverage is great. Yeah, get you a couple cocktails in there. Yeah. So, Jared, I'm really quick because I know we, we're going to have to go to break here soon, but I'm curious because especially you as somebody who like it has interest in the Packers and everything else that's there. Like when you look at where Green Bay is, which they're even bigger in the hole in the salary yeah, cap. Yeah, they're in a and and, spot. and Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. We're talking about better, more impactful players, honestly, than Demar Lawrence and Amari Cooper. And that's no slight to them. They're just more impactful players and a team that went farther. Are are you willing to do that sort of a thing in Green Bay? Do you want to sacrifice, like make more moves to potentially put yourself in a deeper hole to run it back again? Do you think that team's close enough? Yes, because the difference, well, whether I think they're close enough or not, and I do, uh, the difference is with the Cowboys, you've invested a lot of money in Dak and believe that Dak's career is going to provide you a window to compete. While the Packers could certainly find the next Aaron, or not the next Aaron Rodgers, but the next quarterback to competently take the baton, there's no guarantee of that. I don't think Jordan Love is the answer. I don't think people in that building think Jordan Love's the answer. Mm -hmm. So you kind of, it's a ticking time bomb anyway. So you you have the ability to go all in because what's the difference if, if your quarterback is going to be Jordan Love? You're not going to, you know, okay, now I might win three games instead of five. Sweet. What's the difference? So if they had a, if they had a window with Aaron Rodgers that was much wider that they they could guarantee than this year this mm -hmm. upcoming year and they can't even guarantee that at this point uh then maybe it's a different conversation but they don't and so if they don't have the quarterback what's the difference now i know there are people listening who think well the cowboys don't have the quarterback either that's a totally different discussion oh, they on, obviously man. 
Well, no, no. I, listen, I, I'm. I'm he, he's uh, not saying that. No, no. He, I'm, he's I'm saying there are people who no, love a big dad, but like I know, but they don't. They don't watch. You're, the sport, you're, you're the I'm only sorry. one who came in here with a Ben Denucci hat and, listen, and showing some support for Denucci. Yeah. Yeah. And I love Denucci. Denucci's a great. <laughs> like, like personally, he's a great guy. Yes. But, but that's the difference between what you were saying and sure. I think with the Packers is whether or not you do feel like they are in a position to run it back. This is their last chance anyway. Yeah. Because once Aaron's gone. You just you can't guarantee that the next quarterback you bring in is going to be good, good enough. Shut to it compete. down. Let's go home. Yeah, same kind of thing. So. That makes sense. All right, we can continue this conversation coming up but next. Kelsey is going to join us for the award-winning Marconi-nominated yes. segment, "Shooting the Breeze with the Beeve." What do we have coming up? I'm going to tell you why every airplane you're ever going to get on is going to crash. <laughs> Very ominous. That's next here on the fan. <laughs> It is 221 here on 105 through the fan joined by Kelsey Charles alongside Bobby Belt. Jared Sandler, happy to be with you Uh, coming up. uh, We will continue the Amari Cooper conversation plus get into the Dallas Mavericks. But right now it is time to shoot the breeze with the beef. I gave the beaver a hot bath. Just wrapping with the fellas shooting the breeze. My name's beaver. Beaver. Is that your given name? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I was in Indianapolis this week. And I had to deal with one of my top fears, which is flying. I hate it. And it's not one of these things where like, oh, I'm worried about like motion signal. Have you guys ever seen A Few Good Men? Yeah. No. They're, oh, there's they're a scene seen in there. Those? I mean, like I think movies? I'm... Oh, Jared. You know no, me. yeah. Okay. This is another That discussion. wasn't like a fight. I'm like, oh, are no, you a movie no. fan? Some people don't like movies. No, she is not. She's t- seen literally like 10 movies in her life. That's not it's an exaggeration. Really bad. Hey, well, By well, choice or just like, I don't know. they didn't have movie theaters I think it's in like Kansas. A, I don't think it's a choice. I think I literally physically cannot sit still for as long as she it takes to watch She can't lock in. She just checks out. And yeah. So, but TV yeah. shows. You... Oh yeah. I'm watching Inventing Anna right now. Oh, I like it. Oh it's gosh. Good. I didn't like that. It's so I watched the first episode while we were in India and I just was like, there's not a likable character in this show after one episode. I just love Julia Garner. I I know. I think that's why, because there's no one likable in me. I think I'm sick. I'm broken. So it, it tracks. Keep going, though. Remember, uh, truckwreck.com text line if you want to uh, take Kelsey out. And, and since now she's like, I'm broken and I'm sick. So 877 881 1053, your best Hashtag pickup marketing, line. Yeah, baby. yeah, there we go. On <laughs> brand. Uh, yeah, I had to confront. There's a line in A Few Good Men where uh, Kevin Pollock and Tom Cruise are talking about having to hop on a flight. And uh, he says, you know, don't worry, I'll bring one of my motion sickness uh, medications for you tomorrow. Says that to Tom Cruise. And he goes, I don't dislike flying because it makes me sick. I dislike flying because I think it's going to crash into a mountainside. And that's my whole thing is that everything about flying to me just seems unnatural. And I know that's irrational because there's like a lot of math and science behind the ability to get airplanes in the air. But I see that airplane up there and I go, that reasonably should not be up there. There's just no way. That's magic, essentially, to me. And you, you should I, watch Downfall on Netflix about Boeing and their. Oh, I thought you meant I feel Downfall. Like that's the old. He shouldn't do. N- no, no, I, I would. No, I think he should just because I'd love to. I'd love for him to have to go through that. Look, for you're now. like I'd love for it to cripple you. No, I'd love never allow I, you. To I fly love it ever because I, I read. I, I've had the book on tape, like out from my walks, about the whole Boeing Max Eight <laughs> grounding, and then I. Um, <laughs> One of my like my absolute favorite show to watch is Air Disasters, which goes over like all the big plane crashes of all time. Because I would much rather feel right than feel safe. You wonder how like, you, you understand how illogical this is. Yeah. Okay. I, just I said make it's sure. a rational fear. Okay. Cool. Because you're watching things that like actually are showing you your largest and greatest fears, like, yes. and you're not desensitizing yourself. I actually think you're perpetuating yeah. no, said theories. That's a hundred percent what I'm doing. Okay. I'm saying I would. I'd much rather get the high of proving my own self right. And I love being right so much that I'd rather feel like I was right than feel comfortable and safe. Sure. So I actually also have a little bit of an issue with planes at times. I've gotten a lot better. I do travel a lot, or at least I, you know, I I used to pre COVID and we're trying to get back into the swing of things. But I, I, for whatever reason, I don't like turbulence. You know, I'm just, I have some anxiety. No one does. Yes, correct. Unless you're sick. But also, I, you know, at the same time, if the window's open and there's turbulence and I can see the ground, I'm fine. It's like if I know what I'm about to crash into, I, for whatever reason, feel a lot better about it. And I think that there's something miswired in my brain with how I process dealing with turbulence. So I I also uh, hate people that go sit in the window seat and close the window. Like, why are you sitting in a window seat if you yeah, can close the window? That yeah. makes zero sense. Look, well, and so like my my, my my anxiety transfers to 
like about flying is like I've researched this. It's like the safest place to be statistically. It's not much, but the safest place to be statistically if the plane goes down is the aisle seat near the back. So I will always sit in the aisle near the back. Um, I, I prepare for all these things. Every single plane that I've ever got on, I've been like, this is the one that's going down. But you go on planes, right? You're not just yes, imagining this. Have you ever opted to not do something because it required a plane? No, but I will, like, if it's within reasonable driving distance, I'll just drive. What about, What's like, a reasonable? private plane? Um, I mean, any, if anything, like, I won't make a flight to Houston or San Antonio or something. I'll drive. Oh. So, I mean, if it's within, you know... Sure. Mm, no more than let's say eight hours driving time. I'll drive. Eight but you hours? would join? Would you join Kelsey on her private planes? Yes. Helicopters? No. Helicopters are, are no, just no, as bad. Planes. Or, oh, her private planes? Yeah. No. 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 Are those worse or better? You think? I mean, I've never flown on one. I've never been, you know, oh. lucky enough. But uh, neither have I. I. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've not either. I, no. <laughs> I've chartered with for baseball, but I've never flown on like one of those like ten yeah. people well, so are on like, it. My, and, my problem is also like I sit there and I just start looking around the plane when I get on. And I just go like, does this look like? a group of people that I would sh- see like all 40 of their pictures next to each other on the front page of the paper. Like, does it, does it look Bobby. like a group of people that would go down? And I like more times than not, I go, yeah. And I was like, I have a face that looks like it would go down in a plane. I like, act- I feel like you could see like my how photo. How you even decide that? Your brain is I terrifying. Know. I, I just, feel I, like I, you I know see that. it and I just think that. By the way, uh, if, if you want to weigh in, uh, 254, what the hell is going on right now? We're talking about irrational fears on shooting the breeze with beef. So if you have your irrational fear, you can text it in. Tell us what it is. 877-881-1053. So, uh, Do you guys want to hear mine? That's my, uh, oh, by the way, I'm sorry, 469. Why are y'all talking about plane crashes when I have to fly to New Orleans on Tuesday? I'm sorry. I hate it, too. I hate flying. So, yeah, let, let's go around the, the, the Before we get to yours, I, I do have one counter to the window thing. Okay, let's see. I, I am a, I'm a curious person, so I'm, the window. I'm not going to agree with you, for the record, just so we're clear. That's fine. You can the, make this argument all you want. You're going to lose, but please. Okay. I, I will make this argument on behalf of my wife, who <laughs> loves the window seat, because she can sleep against the side. I hear that. Buy a neck pillow. Like, fall asleep on the person next to you. I don't care. No, I agree there. You need to be able to lean. I can't just, like... That's yeah, I don't... I, I, I can't sleep on buses or planes, no matter what. But the only chance I have is against the side. But I prefer aisle, and if I ever am window, the window is usually almost always up unless the light is bothering other people. That's totally fair. The light is... I get that. So how about we compromise? How about this? It's like, take off and landing, you open it. And if there's turbulence, you open it. Okay. Just so I know if I'm going to die, like how it's going to go down. My only irrational plane fear is I fear getting stuck next to someone who wants to talk to me for the entire oh, three hour flight. I, like, I, I am the nicest person of all time. Don't talk to me on a plane. Yeah. I can't do it. I cannot do it. I always, uh, I just put, like, honestly, uh, I take, uh, I'll take my antihistamine and I'll put headphones on. Sure. And that, that's how I try and get through the flight. So I, I want to tell you my rational fear. Yeah, I was going to say, what's your, what is your rational real quick? fear? Are we yeah. just going to ignore the fact that we introed this segment with POD? Oh, yeah. It was, uh, what was it, Alive? Yeah. yeah. Did anyone know that they were a Christian band? Because I had no idea. They, they were a crossover band. Yeah, yeah. They, they did a lot of stuff. Anyways, that was a big throwback moment for me. Um, okay, so my irrational fear, I have two. Mine's, one of them is kind of similar to yours. I have a very strong fear of cruise ships. I Cruise ships. Wow, man, words are really hard for me today, you guys. I mean, but maybe both. Yeah, exactly. We're being honest. I genuinely, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> the text just came in. I'm going to need one of y'all to, to read it because it's pretty good. Oh, okay. um, but I, I really am afraid of cruise ships. I don't like turbulence on planes. Imagine being on a boat that is literally in the middle of the ocean and there's nothing around you. And then there's just one of those, you know, bad weather moments and you're stuck. You're literally stuck. And if I'm just swaying back and forth to my demise, that's a big no from me. I got to say the, the water part, that's the other thing. When we talk about I will fly. That is one thing. I will never go overseas because I re- absolutely refuse to fly over water. Oh. That I will not do. No, I think you need to do it. Uh, I won't. I have a lot of anxiety and I've managed to go overseas and it's really worth it. I won't do it. We can just euthanize you temporarily. And I don't think there's such life. a thing as euthanizing temporarily. I think euthanization is pretty, pretty yeah, I think done. sedate is probably the yeah, better. I think sedate is a euthanize. I'm going to opt to go with a temporary euthanization. I feel like it's... <laughs> All right. Uh, a couple of these. Uh, 254, I'm terrified of tornadoes. I don't think that's irrational. Hated those as a kid. Uh, let's see here. 940, following the plane trend. If people are too happy or laughing too much when I board, it feels too good to be true. And I think that may be the, hey, yeah, I'm with you, 940. Uh, 254, I have an irrational fear of beavers. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. A lot of people are scared of me. 817, being in the browsers, fishing, and some amoeba swimming up my junk. That, yeah, that's, that's the one that got that's, me. That's tough. So, that so we got a bunch of... So, Jared, what's a, Jared what, what do you have here? What's your irrational fear? So... 
I do to some degree have a fear of public speaking, but I have I've gotten really? over that. It, You're so it, good I, at it. I well, no, but see, to me, it's different doing play by play to however many people are watching, or even doing a radio show on remote with people around you versus standing up on a stage having to make a speech. I I do it, and I don't think. I'm awful at it, but I literally am full of anxiety for the three or four days leading up and probably spending every free moment practicing my speech because I also can't speak with notes. I have to basically memorize it. Oh, so you actually memorize the speech or do you do talking points? I I memorize. So I will write out my process is I will write out a speech word for word. I will not necessarily memorize it word for word, but I will write it out so that I can kind of know what I was thinking and how I wanted to transition from this to that. But I mean, I'm not like sitting up there memorize or reciting a speech like I'm reading it. Uh, but I will, <laughs> I will try and avoid notes. But the thing that I am, this is irrational, and it's maybe more anxiety than fear. But I'll, I, I have a tough time. I'm a planner, and when I go to an event and I'm not totally sure who I'm going to get stuck talking to, or maybe where I'm going to end up. So I'll give you an example. Yesterday. A buddy of mine it coaches basketball at Frisco Memorial. Mm-hmm. Yes, and they they played Kimball in the whatever it was the the by district try whatever it was. It was to go to San Antonio for state. Richard Kimball. Is that the is that who it is? No, is that, Richard, it's, Richard, no it's Kimball Richard, named after Richard. Richard. No, Richard Kimball was the name of Harrison Ford's character in Fugitive. Oh, okay, sorry. So probably not shooting the wheels off. Uh, and a bunch of us were going to go watch our buddy's team, but we were all going independently. And I, like, have to tell, hey, please, like, make sure to save seats. Where are we going to sit? Like, what are we going to do? And until I get to, like, until I'm seated and we're all together and everything is, like, organized properly, I have a lot of stress. So that whole time driving 20 minutes to the Colwell Center in Garland, I was, like, kind of nervous. Like, what's the traffic going to be like in parking? Uh, what is, you know, am I going to be able to have a parking spot? What if they don't take credit card? What if they're cash only? Like, oh, wow. I, I get nervous. I like to know. I like to have everything planned out. Now, once I get to the event, nothing has to be planned. I just, I like to get there and get the ball rolling. I, and that, that same sort of anxiety hits me with, and I hate it, TSA. So speaking on the flying thing, when I get ready to go through TSA <laughs> and I just get this like panic of like, I'm going to have to take my shoes off and my belt off and then I'm going to have to like, open up my laptop case, set the thing out separately, get the bag of liquids out for like shampoo and everything else. And like, I'm just terrified of like, I don't have this many hands and they're going to be very impatient, angry people behind me. And I'm going to yell that by a TSA agent because it's going so slow. And it's just like, I get very flustered, but I was interested when I was flying back from Indy, they do a lot of things really differently over there that I've not experienced before. Over in Indy? Yeah. When I go through TSA, they didn't make me show my boarding pass, which I've never not had That's to show new. my boarding That's pass. That's new. Are you TSA pre-checked? D- no. Oh, it, you can like scan your ID and it tracks the fact that you have a ticket. No, they purchased. just, they let us through TSA without showing a ticket, which oh, I've sounds- never had happen at an airport before. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't make me take my laptop out of the case. First time I've ever had that happen well, in an airport. Well, that's not new. But I've, I, every other airport, they told me to take it out. They told me to do it leaving Love Field. So I, I don't know what the deal you is. Get TSA pre, bro. Yeah, TSA well, pre I don't fly enough at. to like justify it. I've done clear it's and like some other clear things is before. Great. I've done clear before, but like I mean, it's just I don't do it enough to like subscribe to it or whatever. Can I tell you one more that it's um, very illogical that I'm afraid of? What? I don't even know if, if I would call it a fear. It's more just a complex. I really hate bows. Bows. Bows like bow and arrow. Like no, elbows. No, 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 no. Like the ribbons. Headphones. Ribbons. Oh, I thought you meant like the, like I hate bows like they actually make me physically like have a bit of a gag reflex like I think they're so disgusting and I don't know why and don't y'all dare text into the line about whatever I just said but my name's Bo yeah, I, either way get from I am gonna get that I know I will it's fine I think it was the other thing uh, <laughs> <laughs> no but but okay never mind we could continue Anyways, yeah as a as a young wee child I uh you still I, are I thank you so much I am yeah. so youthful and young um, but I literally would like cut them off of shirts. Like if my parents would put like a bow on my shirt or something, or like it would be like part of the shirt itself. I would like basically cut them off. My like, daughter does that. Don't put them in my hair. I don't want that near me. She can't do headbands. She can't do bows. She'll Ugh. pull them out. She's so, she, you want to talk about irrational. We ran into this like a month into quarantine when everything was shut down and we couldn't do anything to like fix it. She was jumping on the trampoline, the little mini one, the little play school one we have in the house. And like we see her jumping and we're like, why does your hair look so weird? And we looked and she had cut her hair. 
she got off the trampoline and cut her hair and we're like why did you do that and she's like my hair was in my face while i was jumping on the trampoline so she cut like hacked off all the the I, hair and yeah off her i love i mean hey she knows what she wants just get a get a hair tie get a headband well, but maybe she's got a fear of hair ties. she doesn't I, want to wear them she will pull them out i view that as an alternative solution like that's what i think i i respect it quite honestly all right i got one thing before we go okay this is from uh the 972 I swiped right on Kelsey's Bumble profile recently. Ed in Lake Highlands, 3264. What's the deal, Kelsey? His I'm name's not Bo. Ed, oh my gosh. You know what? I'm going to be honest with y'all. Bumble kind of wears me out a little bit because I have to be the one that gives the line. And I have this thing on there where I'm like, okay, I'm going to hit you with like a really bad pickup line because I think the whole convert, like the concept of having the same boring conversation over and over again where you're like, hey, how's your day? What'd you get into this weekend? Like, what's going on? Makes me want to fork my eyes out like over and over and over again. So I opted to try and be creative and like do like a pickup line. Well, I don't really have any pickup lines. So that's a problem. So I started with one that I actually really liked and I'd love to hear y'all's, you know, opinions on it. it. I was like, okay. I was like, oh, hey, um, my phone's broken. It doesn't have your number in it. <laughs> Look, here's the thing. I don't think, I'll be honest, I don't think girls need pickup lines. I'll be honest, though, too. It really escalates the relationship pretty quickly when I'm asking for the dude's number within, like, without even knowing if he has a viable job. You want to talk about irrational fear, though? I think that gives that gentleman then irrational confidence. Ooh. Like, oh, look, they're coming for my number. Is, oh, yeah. Do you think that's, like, the, the problem with Bumble in general, where they're just like, this chick's hitting on me? It's like, yeah, we have to. I don't know. I, I missed the sex tech bubble. I got uh, married before Bumble and Tinder were, like, really popular. I did it so, briefly. So I missed it. I didn't get a chance it's on that. It's pretty painful, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm just, uh, honestly, like, I was so glad I got married when I did. I was like, God, thank goodness I don't have to meet another person ever again. Like, I don't <laughs> yeah, have to, like, deal with that. You skirted that in that regard, but you just mentioned a daughter who is going to grow up with his dating. So okay. you did it. Well, that totally was a thoroughly the... depressing way to end this. Yes. Thank you, Jared. <laughs> you still uh, got time, Bobby. So we're done. Hey, Kelsey. Yeah. Your birthday's tomorrow? It is tomorrow. 21 years old. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm at the point in my life where I feel like I should start lying about my age. Officially able to drink. I Ed, am. Ed in Lake Highlands, you can always... Ed, Ed just, think, and Ed buy her Ed just thinks he swiped right on Kelsey. It was actually uh, Katie Nolan. She Ed, gets that a lot. Hey, I love her. Yeah, Ed, just go ahead and slide. Like, listen, that's how you got to do it. Just slide in my DMs. Like, why not? <laughs> I'm at the point in my life where I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm at tired Kelsey of trying. Kelsey underscore Charles on Twitter. Slide into the DMs. Have you, time out. I got to, have you gone on a date with someone who has slid into your DMs? Yeah, and you want to know how it ended? Poorly. Okay. I hope he's listening. No, oh, you hope you. Wow. Is this someone I'm not? Is this someone that we would know? No. Okay, this he is didn't, random. Actually, no, you wouldn't. Say know his him. name. Uh, it starts with a W. His name is Robert Paulson. Uh, <laughs> you don't get that reference. That's fine. You didn't watch Fight Club because you don't watch movies. Correct. Anyway, yeah. I was shooting the breeze with the beef.